this how to eat my name is Brandis and today I'll be your executive foodie have no fear my girls are still near I got Ashley my head foodie and I have Shanti in here today as my deputy foodie on this episode today I'm going to take you on a trip to France with my first charcuterie board the charcuterie board will have an assortment of fresh fruits an array of fresh meats cheeses sides and toppings fresh fruit and spreads and jams and our bases with our crackers. We'll also be featuring an assortment of fresh black owned wines that I just discovered and I can't wait to taste. Stick around for our discussion on being black and bougie today and get our first initial reactions on tasting these French flavors. We'll see you soon. All right, we're back with the final products. And it looks delicious. How do you guys yes, like it? Ma'am. Yes. Like I said earlier before, today's all about being black and bougie. So, um, first of all, let's get our plates and start fixing your things. I'll give you a rundown of what's on here. Um, like before, we have our trail mix, our honeycomb. These are our assortment of cheeses. We have sliced mozzarella, provolone, asiago. Mm -hmm. This is French brie. This is Kobe. Um, our sliced prosciutto. This is our regular salami. This is our spicy salami. On Shantia's table, horse bread, we have our grapes. Um, it's funny because we have two different types of grapes and we have two different types of olives. Green and purple. Yes. And, <laughs> and then we have our um, sliced green apples. I purposely picked green apples because I feel like the sourness adds to the taste of everything we blend together. Um, this is important. We have two different types of bread bases. The artisan crackers are plain. Um, and then these are actually rosemary and olive oil. Mm. So um, the idea of the charcuterie board is to, from what I've learned, is that you basically pick what type of flavor or what goal you're going for, what taste you're going for. I was going for a savory and sweet. Okay. So I got um, cheeses that have more of a robust flavor and um, some of them are like more of the creamier family. Um, I also went with the tart apples and I went with the meats that have a punch but it won't be overpowering. Okay. Um, the fig jam is also pictured over there. Um, that's actually my favorite when I first had my first tasting of it. It just kind of took things to another level as far as like it's, it's not as sweet as honey but it has more of a warming hug in your mouth type feel. Okay. okay. So go ahead and dig in and I'm try a plain cracker plain. first with the. <laughs> How am I gonna? Now do you like mix this this way? This yep. is honestly my first time trying one of these. Mm -hmm. My first time. Char char charcuterie. Charcuterie. Char 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 charcuterie. Char char <laughs> now do you well, do you char mix the meat char charcuterie? Your turn. Do you mix the meat with the jam? Are you just fix it how you want it? Or? You stack it like a sandwich. So what do you mean mix the meat with your jam? You like mean what's, what like in reality, work? who gon who puts jam with meat? So I'm saying this with this is this. There's no rules really. It's really not any rules, but I would say that. Let me take a stand. So, um, or do I like sprinkle some nuts on top of this? I have seen people take a slice of um, apples and then they'll wrap. The, oh, also, the definitely it. no rules to this. Yeah, not. literally. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends on what you're picking up. Like, you're not going to pick up all of them no. at the same time. And what kind of cheese is this? But like? I feel like cheese, cheese will go cream. with. Brie is really creamy. Okay, I'm going to try that since I've never had it. And you can dig from the inside. Huh? Like, she might need something to keep it stable while she did. Gotcha. I feel like I want to add something else to this. I'm going to just eat it like this. So you might want to like scoop from the middle. Um, That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Mm. You said you want to try it by itself? I didn't feel, I don't know what else would have went with this. Um, I would say try, when you do another one, try a meat with it. 
topped it with a sweet like a slice of the honeycomb and then put this is very sweet I, this is not as sweet, and I'm I'm not a sweet person. I'm just gonna get a little bit of everything. Chantiz, just dig in. <laughs> Don't try to. If I dig in, I'm gonna just eat all the olives. So I'm trying to. Um, I'm want a little bit of everything. I want to try it all together. I think that's kind of what you gotta do because I can't coach you through it. You just gotta figure you out. You gotta what make what like. work. But I just want to make sure. Honestly, I just wanted to see if there was any rules. There's no rules. Okay. It's literally dig in. Oh, Brandon's making her fancy. Because Brandon's been here before. <laughs> Never did this. So speaking of my first time, I've actually had like many examples of charcuterie boards from when I first started doing wine tastings. And that's when I was just like, ooh, it's a whole nother level. Of... Make it feel fancy, huh? Right. And then it actually it kind of goes with it. Like it's part of it. It's a it's a tasting experience. That's basically what this is, is a um culinary tasting and then with wines you know that's the whole fermented grapes tasting experience and together they all just to complement each other well okay okay so speaking of look it's, so i see wait let me see what you got you got a little jam apple is that prosciutto no i got the honey oh that's honey i have the apple slice wrapped in prosciutto and then i just put a slice of mozzarella on top okay, okay. i'm gonna eat this because i feel like it's enough okay Looks more than enough, honestly. So this is all mozzarella, you said again? This one is mozzarella. This one is provolone. Okay. Oxiala. I think I want to try mozzarella. Mm. 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 Oh, Asiago. You know, Asiago is like bold. Yeah. No, I'm going to skip it. <laughs> For now. I'm scared. Actually, I think I've never had it, so let me try it. I do want to make sure that we like bite and sip at the same time. So we do have four different ones. We have two from the McBride Sisters of Black Magic Rosé, and we have their uh, signature red blend. Um, we also have a Pinot Grigio from Sun Goddess, which is actually Mary J. Blige's um, wine. And then House of Brown is from, they're the only black owned Vineyard in Napa Valley in California. So they have mm, they're doing big things. So which one are we starting with? Let's let's sprinkle a little black girl magic first. Okay. Can we pass the bottle, please? Oh, that is yummy. It's, it's, you said that's the rosé? This is the rosé. All right, first impressions. Let's see. Let's see. Wait, let me put one together real quick. Okay. Oh, we're going to. Oh, yeah, as you did say, sip and eat. Sip and eat. Sip and I'm going to do the prosciutto, too. You know what I'm, you know I'm going to do? Just do it. Just do I'm it. I'm going to wrap it around a grape instead of an apple. This is pretty good. And this has 13% alcohol. 13? 13. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's what I'm talking about. Our tea. More than mouthwash. Look at Shantia. <laughs> Shantia uh, proceeding with caution. <laughs> yes. I'm scared myself. I ain't gonna lie. Don't, don't judge me. I'm excited though. I've never had one of these. Well, with the jam and the crack, it Ooh, was good. But no, no. Don't. Put the Slice your um, slice your olive. olive and put that on top. Okay. I'm gonna take that one big old bite. Are we supposed to eat it cute? Cause I ain't cute. Yeah, you know how you feel. Yeah, with this slice of apple, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, olive. Um, I think I am gonna have to try one big bite so I can get it all together. Mm -hmm. My olives, my grapes. All right, let's do this, y'all. All right, one, Woo! two, let's go. Woo! <laughs> mm. Mm. The olive did it for me. That olive was so good with this. I love olives, that's the thing. What meat was this again? Prosciutto. 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 It's basically like 
the mixture between bacon and ham and this pork. All right, finger mm. licking. Finger looking good. Finger licking. Come on, let's um right. top it off with oh. a. Together. Together is a great combo. Correct. Because mm -hmm. by itself, I took a sip before I ate my thing. By itself, it is a it's a blend of rose. Um, I wouldn't call it nothing. I, I don't take it to any bodies of like fruits or anything like that. It's really bland, but it is refreshing. And it complements this. Correct. It does. This is very um I was pleasantly surprised because really? I didn't know what the fuck freak to expect, especially with, now, I won't lie, I'm still nervous about this whole salami. <laughs> you see, I chose the prosciutto first. You did the salami? Mixing around the apple, the green apple. You like it? That was the spicy and the regular. Run the one to the, closer to you. So that's the spicy. And, okay, I wanna try this, um, mm. whatever that was we dug out. The brie cheese. The brie. I'm about to mix the brie now with that same. Mm -hmm. I might even throw an olive in I think though. that jam was a good combo. That too. jam is really, really good. Yeah. It was like the combination all together. That was a good With little the green punch. olive now. And I would say that I am kind of being, I'm copying what I, was, I started talking about my first introduction to the charcuterie board. Um, was around the Thanksgiving holiday time. I went over to um, my friend Keisha's house. And Keisha had just learned about it. Like, she literally is where I am right now. She's just like, oh, my God. I went to Whole Foods. I learned all about putting together my first charcuterie board. So she mm -hmm. set it up for us. We went over for game night. Uh, she set this up, and this is what she had. So she told me that they walked her through the store. I think she went to Whole Foods. They walked her through the store. The lady there was nice enough to inform her that at places like Fresh Market, Whole Foods, Sprouts, um more, what do you call them, like more finer grocers, grocery stores, they actually hire butchers and cheese and wine enthusiasts who know about it. So oh. their job is to kind of educate you on pairs and stuff like that. Oh. So um, her, she was going for the same taste. She was going for a savory sweet board. And these are all the things that that person recommended to her. What was your first impression of her board? Did you was like... Like she doing work. too much? This, oh, no. This bougie? This... Oh, no. First of all, I was... Like, Brandis? I'm sure Brandis loved it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was all giddy. Because <laughs> when I saw the whole honeycomb, I was like, oh, I ain't never seen nobody have that. Like, what? I never said, had a reason to buy a whole honeycomb. Right. Because I'm like, I, all I use honey for is tea. And I'm not going to put that whole block mm -hmm. of crap in the, in the tea, whatever. So I was excited about that. And she was literally, she was just like, let me tell you what I learned about this fig. And she actually had like dried fig. It was like, it was In hard. addition to the jam? No, she didn't have the jam. She uh, had like an actual dried fig and nut type thing. And that was good. That was really good. Okay. Well, thank you, Keisha, for turning Brandis on. <laughs> Don't forget it's a pit in the Yes, oh, yeah, and the black ones. ones. Yeah, I was gonna when I went to cut it in half, I felt it. All right, I am going to dump this because I'm going to try it right next. Well, I'm going to finish. You can... I'm going to finish. Oh, you want it? I'm going to finish. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. I want to try the Mary J. Blige one. All right, so speaking of, we talked about being black and bougie. This right here, so would you consider, because... I don't know, you just asked me like, you know, what made her, how did you feel about your first time? I just said that that literally was about two months ago. So clearly I'm some, I'm new to it, y'all are new to it, we're all black. I think that it is, I, it's new to the friends and family that I have about charcuterie, but I think of it as this is a white people thing, like this is what white people do. Why? Because again, it's, it's not a plate of soul food, it's <laughs> not like, fried chicken or it's not nothing average. Like I'm never gonna go to my grandma house and she gonna feed me a spread, a, char a charcuterie spread. <laughs> but I feel like if Becky invited me to her grandma house, they might pull this out. <laughs> True. 
So, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Is it is it a white pretty people thing? Or because it's a white fancy thing, is that what counts it as a bougie thing for us in the black community? Just because they're white. So, um, so okay, a bougie. Like, is that something that we can put on white people? Is that no. just something that we as black people, that's our word. That's our okay, word. I hear bougie, that's our word. That's okay. our word. Bougetto, too. Okay, so yeah. what's the definition of bougetto? And what's the definition of bougie? Me? Boo- I'm bougetto. <laughs> I think Bougetto, you know how to turn it I mean, off and on. Yeah. Okay. You 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 know how to act accordingly to your environment. And when That's, you go to someone yeah. like Cabana Sands, you know to turn on that ghetto. And but then you could go go to what's the name of the little cigar shop in town? Ta- yeah, across the street from Yeah, you yeah. know to Dress it up, make it look good. But then there's some people that I think that's the best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> but some people do not know how to turn it off and on. And do y'all feel when people that don't know how to turn it off and on and go to nice places? That's and do y'all y'all just about to say do y'all feel that's embarrassing? Embarrassing. For sure. Like to, what do you mean to the culture? They don't or, know how to cut off the ghetto. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say which part are they not turning off? The ghetto. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've been with people who don't turn off the bougie and I'm embarrassed because I feel like they're doing too much. Like they're When you acting. say they don't turn off the bougie, is that someone you grew up with and you know they don't act bougie at all or is just someone that's in their that's character? Oh, um, no. It's for me, it's people who I've been around that kind of grew up a more, in a more fancier environment. Mm-hmm. So they automatically assume this position that, oh, I'm fancy, I'm bougie. So when we go out to different places, they're not being themselves. They're just like acting like a huxtable or they're acting like... It's because it's different for them. That's like someone coming from the, um, like who's being off ghetto going to a fancy place. Mm-hmm. Different for them, so yes. they don't know how to... Right, so I'm not saying going out to a fancy place. I'm like just going out in general and just being themselves where they're so used to being this tighten up, button up person where it's just like, relax. Like, you don't have... You can let it go in yeah. this environment and they can't turn that part off. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that becomes equally embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Nah, I can agree with that. All right, so I tried one with the rosemary um, chip and wait, what, oh, this is the rose. It. I have not tried those. Let's take it to another level. I don't you know tried them. both little bites I just had was really good. But what this, did you have on your last one? Um, I had a grape wrapped in a red blue. grape, blue, um, and a spicy. I about to say blue, red. I blue, had red, a red grape. grape. Wrapped in spicy salami. Spicy salami. That spicy salami is hitting. With a little bit of um honey on it. Mm-hmm. And an olive. Okay. I threw the olive on the I'm side. I'm so afraid to try the honey. So no, you don't taste it. And give, I do. like sweet salt too. And so. I don't like too, too sweet. That's not sweet like Do that. it, do it. It's, not, it's literally raw. It's not really processed. So it's not sweet like what you're thinking. Uh, I'll give you a plate. And what I did with the chantilly, I kind of like sprayed it on the mm-hmm. Mushed it down and put it on the cracker. It was really mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Now I have a question. Mm-hmm. Do you think social media play a role in... Yes. I don't even know what you finna say. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as we post this, everybody's Body gonna be, be doing shark, shark, charcuterie, charcuterie board. Because <laughs> I've noticed like people start going to places like you said after they see you people posted. talking about it and i don't mind i love telling people because i like finding out new places and things or whatever and going there but sometimes i guess it's i hate to say this but i think it's sometimes it's the people that you see that's going who you know and yeah, and right. in reality <laughs> would not go they just going because you because ashley went because Brandis went. Because other than Brandis are actually posting it, they wouldn't know nothing, nothing, about about it. It. nothing about it. And this is not even like you go to hole in the wall bars. Like, stay your ass over there. <laughs> Why are you showing up over here to my place? I you know why I be feeling that same way. Sometimes and I hate that. Like, is it bad to feel that way, though? That's why I don't post the location. Yeah. <laughs> but is it bad to feel that way? No. But not wanting. No. But they, at the end of the day, they still us. They still are people. So is they, it not right for them to be able to experience things like this? 
But isn't but, that the point of social media is you, sh- you sharing to advertise? <laughs> <to laughs> you're, you're, te- you're technically giving an advertisement. Yeah, like, that's true. But if I, I feel like if you posting you at the hole in the wall and that's something that I know I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go because Ashley went. I would have. Well, that's a uh, personal preference, or well, that's just yeah. a personality. I thing. see. I see what she's saying. Like, I don't try to go do their stuff. Why they trying to do my stuff? That's their regular thing. It's my regular thing. Yeah. But that's that's the, that's the difference between you and them. What they do is they, they go into what's hot. They respect you as a hot and popular. But then when they start going to these places, they start they showing out. out. Seven and then, and then they make us look look it's ghetto now. Or, but not even seventh and grow. I'm talking about like <laughs> why are you putting seventh and grow in this? But because that that's what I thought of when you said that. Like, okay, pause for the listeners and the viewers. We can't what is, no, you but well, what is seventh and grow? It's a local um uh, I'll say more upscale bar slash restaurant in the Ebor City area. That was that's bla- as and a that's, classy place. And it's black owned. And I've only frequented it like maybe three or four times, and I've had fun each time. But each time I went, the well, crowd got, yeah. I leave when the crowd gets overwhelming. So, wait, that, I think we looked at one of those places, y'all see it. What place? place where they have like cool names for the menu items? Oh, yeah, we did look it up when we were trying to like find recipes for um, the segments. But like they had cool names for the wings. Yeah. So. And but, I like it when we went, but, but it was earlier in the day. And like how you, it's <laughs> same instance with Cabana Sands. Like you say you like earlier to go earlier in the day. In the day. You beat but the you, crowd. And Cabana Sands is another bar, local bar club yes, in her area. Now is it, now a person like you sometimes late at night, you be like, dang, I want to go do something. But the places <laughs> you want to go to is like, dang, I can't even go to them because now is after this hour. And you know, the type of people that's going to be in those yeah, places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, my whole thing is, it's not fair that we got to go in the daytime <laughs> to yeah. enjoy something. Oh, that's to what avoid the, the, To avoid the, the chaos, yes. pretty much. Because I don't know, I mean, it's a little off topic, but this kind of wraps up her idea of, like, Cabana, for instance. You go during the day, you could chill, it's a lot of crowd, but you go at night, they jumping off the balconies on the top floor now. So, it's like, you... Then that's to get out of the club to avoid a fight. They was jumping off the balconies on the second floor. So, and that was like all over social media for that. Day. Okay, now let's take Cabana Seventh Grove out of I this. Think. Have we ever been to a white person club and seen how they people act or anything? Or that they people are still black people doing the same thing. No, I'm people. saying them and mm-hmm. their people. Um. I've seen them act up. Yeah, I've seen them act up. I've seen them get crazy drunk. Yeah. I've seen them. But I feel like I don't know because I don't frequent their establishments like that. But I feel like when events are going on or something they're going on, that's when they show yeah. they behind. They they all rowdy, drunk, try to police, try people, try anything. <laughs> but when that's over, that's it. <laughs> you, I think you're right. <laughs> Right. The only like, time I've seen white people cut up and get rowdy, and they in their establishments. Yeah, they, they're out in the street. They're out and about. It's and out in what a city has to deal with it. Like, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up, though. Is it that we don't see it because we don't follow as many of them on Probably. social media? Our yeah. friends are our people, usually. I mean, we have some business partners and, you know, long friends from back in the day, but majority of our friends are like us. So, would we see that? Unless it's on the news. Very good. And our stuff don't make it to the news, so why would that? You know what I mean? Like, bar fights don't make it to the news. So, we would, how else will we see? How else will we know if we don't hang around? Well, I, I typically see the rowdiness at the bars where the college students are at. So, like, in Tampa, in, um, not South Tampa, but I forgot what it's, what it, uh, area is called, but usually, you just, you usually see, like, stuff like that, people fighting. And, like, like so whole district? Bars. Yeah, so district, drinks being on the floor, so... I usually just see with college students, but not like older. So that's people. Probably- well, like I go to different places that are have a mixed crowd, not just all black people. Like here in Atlanta, and if you go to the shops of Buckhead, like there's no question that the shops of Buckhead was made for I would say for predominantly wealthy individuals. Wealthy, it doesn't have to be race. Like 
wealthier individuals because in the shops of Buckhead, they have the higher end brands, but they also have nice restaurants of different types of cuisines. Mm -hmm. And I've gone there for the restaurants. I've gone there to, you know, shop around, window shop, enjoy myself in a more classy environment. I've seen white people that are drunk, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, it seems like they have somebody like it's always a sense of a group of white people is one drunk person. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there's someone to mask that. It's almost it's not like a rowdy crowd or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They seem to just watch their manners or something when they're in their own domain. Mm -hmm. They know how to um they know how to their limits kind of. They keep this shit under wraps as much as possible in public. Mm -hmm. And I that's just what our experience. And we don't, respect that. And we just... We don't give a damn. We don't. And which is a beautiful thing as a culture. Because we're just unapologetically black. True. And spoon for the nuts. True. It's pink is on your plate. Mm. We got it. That's fine. Okay. So, is that a... A good or a bad? Yeah, good or bad? Or does it depend on how you see it? Yeah, it depends on how you see it. Because you could be that person that be like, I like my black people. We, like you said, unapologi unapologetically Apologetic. black. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to do me. I'm I'm bold. Mm -hmm. Black is bold. This, this, this. But then you got people that be like, oh my God, that's so ghetto. Like, well, like with the Taste of Africa episode, we talked about Africans being aggressive. I'm a black person. And I'm like, sometimes they it catch me off guard. And it's so, that just made me think of something else. When people say, oh, that's so ghetto. Mm-hmm. Why is that related to black people? I used to get so mad. Well, because like I, I went to, I went from an all black high school to a predominantly white institution. So when I used to hear that phrase, oh, when I used to hear that phrase, I used to get mad because it's kind of like, why are you saying this is good? Are you saying, is it black? Are you saying mm -hmm. it's bad? Like, what's going on? So I couldn't right. understand. Well, on the converse side, it's like with gentrification. I don't know about in St. Peter, Tampa, but in Atlanta. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. Right heavy. So, okay. As an investor, it. my mom neighborhood is, was West Temple, and now West Temple was not known for. Um, right now, let's put it this way. West Temple is the ghetto. Right? Yeah, let's put it this way. It was one. I didn't gonna say like the ghetto, but yeah. But now, you see white people walking their dogs. Mm -hmm. You see people going jogging, and mm -hmm. you never used to see that. In West Tampa, yeah. and I was watching some TV show the other day where the little boy was like, um, "How do I know if I'm in the ghetto? If I'm when I'm not in the ghetto?" He was like, "When you see white people running, yeah, actually, and, actually and, that's had a roommate. and that's actually true. Yeah. My mama neighbors are now white. <gasps> Never had a white neighbor. And it's, and it's funny she says that same thing in St. Pete with <clears throat> the properties that my family have and the investments and just watching Zillow and all of that. I pay attention to the trends and the real estate there." And just visiting people that stay in, um, like, South South St. Pete, and it's hard to say, oh, South St. Pete is, like, low income or whatever, because South St. Pete could be close to the Skyway, and houses mm -hmm. are a million dollars over there. So it's hard to say. But, like, they, they, you go in the low income part of South St. Pete, and like she said, mm -hmm. one person right here could be a black person, and the next door is a white person. Now, 10 years ago, it was black, 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 black. black. Now, these, hate to put it this but the white people don't have a choice but to stay with us because Not the cost them. of living has went up for one. Mm -hmm. So now they're blended with us. They got to, and, and as they say, they're in the ghetto now with us. Like, Child's Park area, like you guys want to know that, but those are our hoods. Jordan mm -hmm. Park, um, Child's Park, all of those areas, they didn't know with us now. They used to be all ours. So, okay, earlier my example was how white people say button up and tighten up in their predominantly white areas. Mm -hmm. So with gentrification, for me personally, I feel like whatever is the dominant race or culture in that area is what should maintain in that area. Yeah, true. So I get, a, I get upset when I'm in a gentrified area. I know like here in the West End, I know if I go to the West End, I'm going for 100% blackness. Hell, 98.9% blackness. I'm giving that 2% or 2.1% to see somebody else. But I'm going there for that culture. Right. And now it's being gentrified. I'm starting to see more white people. And I'm cool with it. I don't care about white people being there. But what I don't like is when you see 
the neighborhood crackhead on the corner who everybody knows, but you have this 1.2% of white people in there calling the cops on him. Oh, but we know. But the neighborhood knows this. Yes. That, that's our neighborhood crackhead. Everybody know him. Right. And we, 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 we love him. We know that that's, he's just doing his thing. Like, don't mess with him. He's fine. And those the small percentage of white people that's coming in there invading our communities mm -hmm. are forcing it to be tightened up and buttoned up with what they could what they're wow. accustomed to. Never looked That's at true. it that way. Now they can't be coming in our hoods and not calling police on our crackheads now. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> sad about it. Now. I mean, wait, wait, wait. And I hate this when I said that that's not even worse. Like I look crackhead. But you know <laughs> but you gonna call it on the people that's you know, the crackhead that's, you know, breaking into your homes. But if it's somebody that's just cheerful happy hey how you doing and not bothering you stand to himself and you know you give him something he end up then that's fine but that's not but again, right again these people because they're not used they're to not it. Accustomed they're not accustomed to it. to it these are the things that we are unapologetically black but that's part of our culture that's us everybody got that crackhead uncle that crackhead right uncle. Yeah. whatever so yeah. it's normal to us even with noise like they'll have call police and noise complaints because people driving up and down the streets too loud. But what you but not noise? knowing we like loud music. We like loud music. We, <laughs> we like, like loud cars. Like if you got boys on bikes, they zoom it up and down. That's what you're gonna hear. It's part of the soundtrack of being in a predominantly black neighborhood. Not the hood. I like the sound. Just a, mm -hmm. br a br predominantly black neighborhood. Not the hood. Because you can even hear somebody, I can hear kids calling them. I heard kids out here last night. Exactly, kids calling out to each other across different streets or whatever. It's just like it's part of the everyday norm because some white person to move in next door That's and call the police. So many cameras and kids right now because they're not accustomed to things that in our culture. Well, they need to so if it's unfamiliar to them, they reject it. So and I think. Yeah, to preserve the predominant area that you're in, you gotta respect that culture. True. If we go to a predominantly and white area, they're quiet. Go. So we shouldn't be loud when we're out there. Even if that's who we are. And when we go out there and we loud, they will call on us. Correct. But I, I, I can say they can call it. But if, you, if you move right? into that type of area. Hold on, hold on, pause. You just said that they could call if we're in their area. Because but then they come to us and call them on our crackheads. And that's why I have a problem. Oh, okay. I thought you like, said the opposite. No, I have a problem. Like, you, it doesn't matter if, it's, if I go to a Hispanic area. Mm -hmm. If I'm mad at the Hispanics doing what Hispanics do and I'm in that area, that's I got the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. I got you. And if, I, if, if they are, if they speak Spanish in a... Um, in a Bank of America, and everybody speaks Spanish, but that's in the Spanish part. And then I gotta. Get if it. I don't act like I know, if I can't say "si," "gracias," or something <laughs> when I'm in there, <laughs> like that's I'm in their domain. And, that, and that's yeah. basically when you visit another country. Right. You can't get mad at things that they do over there. You shouldn't because you're visiting them. Right. So, but I guess if you're making a home in that area, you want to be comfortable. But at the same time, you should have done your research. And you should have. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You should have. No, they have all types of. That's why we take the. What's the little thing we take every couple of years? Uh, the census. <laughs> so, or you know, they should just like as a homeowner, like you need to make sure that you or a, a potential buyer, you need to make sure that you ride through those neighborhoods at night because, and in the day. Because you, that's why are you gonna spend like over two hundred thousand dollars and not be happy I in think, an area I'll, that you're in? It's probably because of taxes too. Because once you buy houses in these areas, you it's kind of like more taxes for you or something like that. I, 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 I've, heard, I've heard of something like that where like, you know, especially with like in Tampa where they're like pretty much redoing, um, yeah, pre pretty much redoing the whole low income area by downtown because you get some kind of tax credit. Yeah, some type of tax credit. For so it. it's tax beneficial. Mm hmm. To move into a lower, I can't see them moving over because there. because yeah. then once everybody else is doing it, then it's going to rise. The value of everything else is going to rise. But that pushes sure. the people who can't afford the increase. It out. is what it is. And and that's, that's, that's how that's how you see it. That's gentrification. That's, that's gentrification. Exactly. Mm. That's crazy. So, just so because they much, move into our neighborhood, everything goes down. Down. Money. Yeah. That's not fair at yeah, all. Just because they want to make it for them, everything goes up. She thinks she's seeing it in St. Pete. It's ten times worse. I mean, in Tampa, it's ten times worse than St. Pete. See, as, and I say that again as an investor because I'm paying attention. Did to they the knock change. down any of y'all low income projects? Because they're the trying. West to. Tampa projects already been knocked well, down, and they build. They already yep. built the first 
um, a high rise and um, apartments. I've seen right the plans the that they're going to do. I used to um, work in Eborn. I've seen the plans that they're going to do with Eborn, too. Yeah, so, so it's everything is changing they in that area. They tried to buy um, Bethel Heights, which is yeah, my sample project is not swiped out. So, so circling back to our cultural differences, I think that to your point that you when we started the conversation, and both of you guys were talking about how black people basically if some if you post something and um less than bougie or bougetto black person sees it and they want to go and then they <laughs> become <laughs> and, they just, and they just ruin the moment and ruin the vibe. I would say to black people's credit, we don't really we're not trying to desaturate a higher class environment. We're just trying to experience it too. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that that's what happens. That's what we're experiencing when you post something and somebody who had never heard about it, they go and see it. They they just want that experience. They want like, oh, I want a classy experience, so I'm gonna go. They can't help but be who they are, so it makes it uncomfortable for you. I just thought about something else too. And I think just social media period, has a, a big play on a lot of it. Because when you said the part about, oh, she sees her post it and then she's going to want to try it and experience it, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's not even about the damn experience. They want to go so it's, that they can post it on it, social media. Exactly. That was where I was yeah. getting at in my question. Like, some people just to do it, just to do it. So I'm not too much credit. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it goes back to when she was saying with what I see. And, they they don't it's not and, and from what I've experienced in person watching these people it's record a, and you know <laughs> you're not even enjoying your food you're not enjoying your wine that's why you're it goes back to what she was time. saying yesterday about clout chasing you want people to know you went there you want people to reach out to you and say oh where you got that from where you going where you at like you you like that attention some but, people do it for the mm -hmm. attention well, and not do not it like for the experience right. that's a totally different thing you just doing it just so people could know you went no i want the i want the, i want the experience i want the culture I want I want the back. especially if i travel who especially when people travel who who you could oh, tell okay. never been anywhere the way how they be like, like the pictures like, they take. They're like, I want to go to this spot only because they want to take that picture. Yes. Yes. Hello. Instead of just enjoying that should, the enjoying, That should be uh, an extra, a benefit, you know, yeah, something you, extra to do. But not, don't plan a whole $600 yeah. trip just to, just to take a picture. And that's, that's what they do. You look at social media and they like they they've taken all these pictures and they just it, they didn't do nothing. Like I literally can look at there's I'm not gonna say no names of course. I can look at social media and my Snapchat and if somebody there's this two particular people, they go on a trip and if you look at their story, 24 hours, 23 hours, 22, the whole time you're there, you're recording. How the fuck are you enjoying your trip? You're not like I bet none of these people go on tours to learn the history of the the culture, the people. You just and, you and, then, the whole time. and then you go, <laughs> then you go to another country to do the same thing you could have did at home. Agreed. To go take a whole bunch of videos, videos twerk, eat at Olive <laughs> Garden if they have all of eat it at something American. You didn't try nothing else while you was there. You didn't like that stuff irks me. Like why did you even go? So now I can't even rely on you. To ask you any question about the trip, about the trip to see if I want to plan to go there because you didn't do anything outside of the norm. So that brings but up a difference between different people. Different classes. Different classes of being black. And bougie. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's, it's different levels to being Social black and media has such an effect on everything like I, I think social media is the blame for a lot of stuff that's why i study it so much it really, yeah. social media is the future though because I, yeah i, I, I study it so much it can make or break you in at the same time so it's a blessing it's a and a curse it's gonna be right. in the future it's gonna be everything though like advertisement like people starting businesses you don't even think about it yellow books you know, who does that anymore? Mm -hmm. They go straight to social media. They, they don't even Google, they don't even Google anymore. And you know what they makes get past that and they jump on Facebook and say, "Hey, do anybody know exactly?" Who go to and then they know what else? Right. Google it. Bitch. In that You're same right. category, what makes me upset? You people be like, "Oh, they see you start a business. They see, oh, I want to do that. What do I need to do? What do I need to do?" Instead of that person helping that person, they turn them questions that they're asking you into another business. Oh, if you want me to help you start a business, <laughs> I ch I charge three hundred dollars. You can go look up how to start your, your own, own and register your name with the state and everything. You know what? 
Because, because people lazy. But that too, but, but but also people rely on other people's word. But that's that's the fundamentals of business. Yeah, people yes, rely on other people's word. Even you, you're, you're, you're more comfortable on how to start a business, how you gonna do the rest. Yeah, but you're you're more comfortable getting it from someone that you know rather than you know, But that same person everybody. not gonna be there to hold your hand while you But the Mashantia, that's the basis of business. Yeah. Like you start a business or to capitalize off of somebody not wanting to do it. True. That is very true. That's very true. <laughs> so that's I can't I can't knock somebody. No, no, I'm not that. knocking that person for taking their money. I'm knocking the person who's being lazy and that's not being just, able to. But that's, that's how that the next person get business. That's and that's not just social media. Yeah, because trust me, I'll business. do it too. Like I gotta like, take your money. I might say, in for a, instance, just a good example of that off topic, but laundry. There's people starting business to just wash and fold your clothes because you don't want to yeah. do that, Now, that's understandable because you could be not only oh, lazy. I can, you, I can get no, a whole you, list of stuff. But I'm saying that's not only being lazy. It could be you too busy or too schedule busy. or whatever. But your schedule not shouldn't be too busy for you to start up in your own business because you're going to have to dedicate time to that anyway. True. But they don't so, want to dedicate they time to the That means they're not going to have the dedication to the business. And that's, that's not as a, If I'm the business, that's not your that, that that's not, not, not problem. It's not my problem. I think I get where you're getting at because... I totally get what she's they're, saying. They're, they're probably people because... We have so much um, clout for being an entrepreneur. Oh, you, you gotta go start your own business. You gotta go do this. You gotta go do that. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm so not. Now, so now, so now people are like, oh, I can just start a business. It's just this easy when people don't think that starting a business is pretty hard. It, it, it really is. It really it's, is. It's actually pretty hard. That but, is be, true. but because there's so much clout and, you know, with 2020, everything. They make it look easy. If they make it look easy and everybody doing things on their own. So someone's like, oh, I could just do this. You could just give me all the answers. I can, I can they, when they see a business, they say, oh, I want to start a clothing business. I just yeah. Go buy my clothes and sell it. Yeah. No, right. what about the website? Yeah. What about your logo? What about all of that? They don't think about none of that. So what makes it easy is what they see on social, the finished product on mm -hmm. social media. So they need that person. That's when they pay that person to start up that part for them. Yeah, they want the ending, but they don't want to do the leg work. Yeah, anymore. there's too many people who want the ending. Now, now about okay, okay, I have another. I have uh, another. <laughs> I have a, oh, okay. Another question. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new money in our culture right now mm -hmm. a lot of new money now we said social media plays a big part mm -hmm. and but with this new money they're doing basically the, right. <laughs> the same thing but trying to make it classier like going to buy brands yeah, now I don't know what you're yeah the the but they're taking this new money to go buy brands that they would not normally buy if they like didn't. what Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton oh, yeah. Gucci. But we've always okay, done that. She's trying to beat around the bush. I'm trying. To, I'm not trying to put too much out there. So basically, with what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. all this unemployment and all these opportunities, mm -hmm. they're taking the money from their opportunities mm -hmm. and buying shit that they've never had before. They're buying Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, Chanel, like real deal. She now, when we go, so, so facts. So overall, I think. Thumbs up or thumbs down on the charcuterie? Thumbs, thumbs up. up. Thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on the ones that you tried today? I would um, probably say my uh, favorite. Uh, uh, this Mary right here? No, Mary right here. I felt Mary put... She was the icing on that rosé, like. <laughs> it was the sweetest like, it was, Yeah, easy. and then that Mary, um, this drink right here, I feel it. I taste that. I don't know if y'all tasted the red blend. I have not. Hold on me. The red blend, I'm, I'm feeling that one. I like it for sure. It's more full body. Let's all make sure something in that glass so we can toast to this episode. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. Man. And it looks mm. like we're going to have to save the Chardonnay for an off-camera experience, but... Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell to be notified next time I post a video.